Okay. And before we pray, I just wanted to, since we're looking at life skills, just wanted to read from Proverbs 22 and 29. Proverbs 22 and verse 29, which says, um, Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Right? Uh, so which um, it talks about skill, one who is skilled in his work, right? Um, who excels in his work, or in other words, who is skilled in his work. He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. So um, the Bible does testify or um, exhort us that the one who is skillful, the one who is skilled, um, for that person, uh, you know, he will stand before people of influence. He will stand before people of power. Okay, so we'll stand before people of influence and power, and not before you know unknown men, right? So, um, so that's something that for us to think about when we, or that should motivate us to um, to consider our skills, to consider uh, sharpening our skills and in improving, increasing our skills, right? So, okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this exhortation from your word. Um, Father, we thank you that um, each one of us, Lord, you have given us abilities, skills, talents, giftings, God. And we just pray that we'll continue to hone that and sharpen that, Master. And uh, Father God, so that you may be glorified, so that our lives will be fruitful and effective, God. And Father, we thank you for the possibility of our, Lord, um, skills being uh, for us to grow in our skills, for us to increase in our skills, Father God, um, because you're the greatest teacher and um, you are the one who empowers us, Father God, to go beyond what even we think we can do, Father God. And I just pray, Master, for all uh, um, ceilings and barriers and limits to be broken, Lord, the limits that we have put on our own lives to be broken limits that others have put on our lives to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for liberty because where your spirit is, there is freedom, there is liberty. And I just pray there'll be a stretching, there'll be a Lord breaking through, Lord, in each one of our lives, Father God, in the area of the area of our um, Lord, um, even what we see as limitations, Father God, that we will go beyond it, Lord. We thank you. Uh, enable us to um, put in that work and enable us to endure, enable us to go through and persevere, Father God, and not give up. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So uh, I think last class we looked at um, interpersonal communications. We brought that to a close and we started on uh, management of time, right? We looked at uh, a couple of thoughts on time. So we'll continue with that. Um, so time is, uh, yeah. So we, we looked at, you know, the, the key to understanding or managing time is to, is to really, uh, consider prioritizing it, right? It's as simple as that. Maybe right now our lives may not be crowded with a lot of tasks. Maybe it doesn't, uh, require, uh, you know, maybe we feel that, okay, there's a lot of time for a lot of things. You know, maybe we might feel like that. And I felt at that one point while in, I was in school or maybe in college, it just felt like time is like one big river. It's just always flowing. And, you know, uh, there's always time for enough of that, you know, enough and more time for everything to be done. That suddenly you realize that, hey, we need to do a lot of things in a day. You know, in 20, 12 hours or 24 hours, there are a lot of things to be finished and it needs to be done. And those are times when you realize that whatever perspective that we had on time in the past or whatever abilities that we had to manage time in the past is not really helping right so uh, so our basic understanding of uh, managing time would be first of all even before we look at prioritizing to to consider time as a good resource right to consider time as something precious because if we if we don't consider time as something precious, then we there is no requirement for us to prioritize it. Right? So we need to look at time as something that's precious, something that's a, that's as a gift from God, something that needs to be stewarded well. Right. So we're looking at our days, how we spend our days, our moments uh, in every day, and so on. So um, we look at that as something precious. Secondly, 
we we um, develop our skill to prioritize it right so what is urgent what is important i think that's what we looked at last class that urgent things require our immediate attention right but it's not the consequence of that may not be the consequence of not doing it may not be great right the consequence of may not the damage may not be so much not always but the important task that required to be done right um for example if you if you look at this grid uh, in the notes talks the what do we call as the priority matrix matrix um so it has four four boxes and i think we've seen it before so the left one is of high importance actually the first row the top row it's of high importance right and the second one um uh, the second row is of uh, low importance and then the first column is high high in terms of urgency the second column is of uh, low in terms of uh, urgency right so when we look at the first box on the left top it is at an action which is high in importance and high when it comes to urgent so it is urgent and it is important okay so when it's urgent and when it's important that is something that needs to be done right because it is urgent and it is also important that has to be attacked or that has to be done first right um we 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 bring it down right if you look at uh, uh, the box left uh, sorry left bottom it's low importance but it's high in urgency so it is urgent uh maybe some call that needs to be made maybe some letter that needs to be posted maybe some email that needs to be done uh you know maybe it's something to do with subscription something to do with you know it it could be urgent but you still have time maybe or you still have i'm sorry not time it it's the consequences of it are not great so it's low in importance right so some tasks like that you can do it later right you can do it maybe second you can do it third you can do it later right if you look at the top right box the one which is uh, um i mean if uh, the one which is uh, um, uh, orange you know in the screens but yeah top right in the notes it doesn't <laughs> look orange uh, it it is you know something that is high importance but it is low in urgency okay so we do that as a second task right so high priority would be what is urgent and important next would be something that is important but not very urgent okay so so what is the thing we understand that in our prioritizing what is important moves up okay the tasks that are important that are marked as important those move up right then the tasks which are important and urgent that is the first one right then the last one the box that we see is low in importance and low in urgency right so it need it doesn't have any consequence doesn't have any impact whether we do it or not so either we don't do it or we can even ask someone else to do it right it doesn't require your uh, intervention right so you can do it later as well right so um so these are some things it's a guiding principle for us to uh help right? for us to um, so the thing is when we look at this you know sometimes uh, there are certain tasks which could be high in importance and high in urgency right it's important and it's urgent but it's not the favorite thing for us right it's not what we consider to be very pleasant right it may not be something that we enjoy doing so what happens is because it's not our favorite task it's not pleasant it's something that you know we we push it and we say okay i hope by not doing this things will change you know let me just not do it it's because it requires effort it's not something that i enjoy doing it but we know it's high in urgency it's high in importance but we don't get to do it and that's when things become 
you know things become uh, really high pressure for us we become stressful right when when those things do not get done and it becomes a pattern in our lives right where um uh, we are not managing our time well and it also has impact in our lives right um so we miss out on a lot of things because of that okay so here are some thoughts to help some some tools to help us one of the things is to um, you know if you are working at a desk to keep it clean right to keep it orderly uh, our personal belongings to keep it orderly to keep it uh, uh, you know uh, to keep it clutter free uh, if you are working on a laptop you know to arrange it so that you can find things easily right if you are putting it in folders you're putting your information in files if you're putting your you know your books your notes whatever you're arranging it clothes also you know if your personal things belongings if you are arranging it if we are keeping things tidy then we can always find it retrieve it easily and that actually helps us that helps us uh, prevents us from wasting time right so clutter also visually you know when we say clutter you know things that are not arranged visually also when we look at things that are cluttered it does not help us help our thought process it is distracting and it doesn't help us so um you know some some uh, you know advice or hacks that you can think of is when it comes to our personal things you know things that you can keep things that you can give away things that you can throw away okay actually when you are moving house when you are shifting house is when you realize that we have collected lot of things unnecessary things and right? especially when you are shifting house after uh, we shifted our house the first time after 10 years right 10 years we stayed in the same house and then we shifted to another place and then we realize in 10 years there's so much of unnecessary stuff that you collect things that you don't use at all you know you just keep it saying okay maybe it will be useful maybe it will be useful you know but you don't use it at all you don't touch it at all Like so many things that you can actually give away, it can be useful for others, or maybe it's a useless thing that you can just throw it out. Right? So many things that we uh, unwanted things that we accumulate. Um, so you know we can throw away, we can recycle it. Uh, that will help tidy things or make things uh, clean for us, so that our planning, our execution of plans, everything can be uh, clutter free. Right? Uh, another thing that. Uh, that we looked at last class also is that uh, which is the best moment for you to do certain tasks right when is your energy level high right uh, when can you give your full attention uh, when is your attention span high you know those are moments when we can pick and do uh, those important tasks okay um, then the other thing is not to delay okay why do we delay any any thoughts why do you think we delay doing certain things you know the word is procrastinate right uh, like somebody said you know procrastination is putting away to do tomorrow what you were supposed to do yesterday <laughs> so you were supposed to finish it yesterday but then you put off till tomorrow right so that's procrastinating delaying so, but why do we why do you think we do it any thoughts so we can actually identify it. <clears throat> i think actually each person can say something <laughs> why do you why do we delay maybe others can also learn huh because we are lazy because it requires a lot of effort and then you don't feel like putting in that effort okay same answer first same thing okay to do that time mm. it's need, not very interesting yeah this need little more attention and you know you have to literally sit and do yeah so we try to yeah well, yeah one could be a lot of effort it requires a lot of brain work maybe you have to think and then you don't want to do it uh, yeah so and then this one is mm becomes a pattern yeah and time is not right uh so we put it away hmm yeah so maybe we feel that okay uh, now is not the time 
I'll do it later. But when we say well, now is not the time, why do we think like that? Because maybe you know, sometimes it's like this. You know, we think that it will require a lot of time. In this particular task, I have to do a good job. It's going to require a lot of time. I need to give it one hour. So I don't have, I just have 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So I'm not going to do it. Right? So we just leave it. But then actually the task would require maybe 10 minutes. It's not, you know, it's not that big a task. But then we think in our minds that, oh, it's going to take a huge chunk of time. I don't have it. So I put it away. Right? Why? Uh, what else? Sometimes it's, when you look at the matrix, we think that, it's not important, it's not urgent. Okay. We put it away. We say, okay, it's a it's a wrong call, it's a wrong, uh, you know, wrong discerning, wrong judgment. We think that hey, I can do it. It's easy. I can do it in 10, 15 minutes. I don't have to do it now. And when you actually do it later, you realize that hey, I should have started. You know, it's like when we just for our studying for our exams, right? I remember. I'll have one timetable. I'll put one nice schedule. And this will be like two months in advance or three months in advance. You know, like one subject will have maybe a few weeks. I can handle, you know, I have a few weeks. Then I'll look at it and say, okay, actually, this subject has, you know, three weeks or four weeks, three weeks, and you know, I can do it. I can actually do it later. So that one bad three weeks becomes one week. And then finally I realize that it's <laughs> one day. And even that becomes the, just the day before the exam, right? And it's all panic and all that. And why did it happen? Because we made a wrong judgment. We said, okay, we can actually do it. There's lots of time. Sometimes we we overestimate our ability, right? Overestimate our ability to learn things, to do things. We think that, okay, I can do it. But that tasks that or those tasks require a lot of effort require a lot of concentration and you know uh, so so those are things so these are different things for different people uh, but we procrastinate right and um, we really need to um, kill that thing because procrastination like they say there's a saying like procrastination is the thief of time right so it's like a time stealer Okay, the other one is multitasking. Okay, what is multitasking? Yeah, too many things at the same time, right? So, uh, actually, scientists say, uh, you know, our mind can on only do one thing at a time, right? Successfully, effectively. Even though we, you know, we might be doing it, but our mind can actually process it, processes, processes it, it very quickly. Right. Suppose you're saying that, okay, I'm going to look at this, I'm going to look at this, I'm going to listen to this and do all this, but actually our mind is divided. You know, it's actually when you look at a particular thing, you're reading something, you're actually focusing there, and then you're looking at the screen, you're focusing there, you're listening to something, you're, you're mm -hmm. focusing there. So your mind is actually switching. You're constantly, your brain is you know, switching from one, from the book to the screen to the music that you're listening to. So it's actually we cannot effectively multitask, right? So our effectiveness of each of those tasks comes down. Yes, you know, we are required sometimes to do these multiple tasks, but it'll be good if we can, you know, if we, if we don't uh, do that at all times, right? So because the effectiveness, the end result of all those three or four tasks that we are trying to do at the same time, um, it's, it's not as good as that one thing that you focus and do at a time, right? Okay. And we try and multitask because maybe we have procrastinated, maybe we have delayed, and we want to finish everything at the same time. Okay. What really helps us is also to you know be at peace, staying calm, and keeping things in perspective um, when you do it, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, so that's a simple you know topic about management of time. But when it comes to implementation or living it out or applying it, uh, then we realize that hey, it's a it's actually a complex thing, right? Okay. Um, so having a having a good schedule helps to manage time. Okay. Uh, I think in Christian leadership we looked at uh, Peter Bregman's that um, to do list. 
remember sharing that the four things or five things that you can actually those boxes um, that really help you right uh, each of those box with difficult um, sorry different tasks so you don't um, you know miss out on anything any important task but you can actually do it right so having a to do list really helps so that we don't miss out on it and there are lots of tools to help us right okay then we move on to another um, resource that is about uh, you know when we say resource this is what comes to our mind which is finances or money right uh, many times we you know when it comes to money management we think okay i i need not think about this or i need not get this skill or i will acquire this skill when i have lots of money right when i get lakhs and lakhs of money or thousands and thousands of money in the bank then i will think of how to manage it right now it is all the money that i have is what i have in my pocket or what i have in my one cover in my cupboard right so i don't need to have that skill you know that's our usual thing you know i'm not earning much or i'm not earning at all but the thing is that this skill is something that that needs to be in our in our system right um it needs to be part of our thought process so that even if it's a you know even if it's 100 rupees or if it's you know 100000 um this is a skill that we need to have right managing money because um faithfulness in using it stewarding this important resource is very important is required and having the skill early in life is is very very important right so that we can we don't um you know when we get to a place of managing you know finances whether it's someone else's or ours um we don't lack this ability we don't lack the skill okay so so some things to think about when it comes to money is uh uh to have a budget right so what is a budget a budget meaning having a track of what is our income okay what is coming into our lives what is the money that is coming into our lives and what is the money that we that goes out of our lives or in, in other words what is our income what is our expense right and in in addition to that what is it that i require for the future now that's the budget right what is it that is required for the future uh, how much is required for let's say you know a month okay, a month of expenses what is it that is required so how am i going to spend this money which is coming in that's a budget right so um so which means we need to have our income in place we need to know okay what is the income what are the sources of the money that i'm getting um you know if i'm an employed person then you know there's a salary that's coming if uh, you know if there is a if you're a person in ministry then that then also you know that there is okay there is a maybe there is a monthly thing that is coming or maybe there's tithes and offerings that is coming in and so we need to plan because out of that um i mean you learn more on church uh, administration and management ministry uh, but you know we need to plan that um out right so maybe if you are a student okay how is it you know maybe there some some amount of money that comes in maybe it may not be great may not be too much but how do you you know how do you use that how do you plan that because the expense will always be there right whether there is income or not expense is always there that's a reality there are some things which are fixed right um and uh, like a uh, rent could be a fixed expense this electricity bill could be a fixed expense water bill uh, you know our food expenses travel expenses these are fixed uh, expenses uh, if you look at a ministry where again you know if you are renting a building for church or if you you know those are things that are always there those are, those are fixed expenses overheads right so we need to understand okay this is our expense this is our income and uh, and uh, and make a track of that right okay also it helps if we have if we can work out from our list of expenses what is essential what is non what is a non essential thing right 
what are things some things that are non essential what are essential no essential things we cannot do without and i say essential it is something that is required right we cannot do without it we cannot compromise on that it is required but the non essentials what we can call as a want right when we say essential it's a need when we say non essential it's it's a want right essential is okay food right we need food to survive we need every day uh, but a want would be okay eating out at a restaurant right a need would be okay i just cook i make it i eat it a want would be i you know i'm eating out uh, in a restaurant or ordering food you no know, that's a that's a want that's not a need right that's a non essential thing so we need to uh, you know kind of make that in in each one of our lives there will be some essential non essential so we need to you know understand that okay so can i afford this non essential thing or should i not really have this in my budget in my spending or at least in this month when other things are other important things need to be considered this non essential thing you know should i bring it down should i not you know should i knock it off the list right okay um it's always good to set aside some amount for savings set aside for future set aside some money for emergencies right so uh, you know as students we might think okay now you know why should i do this you know whatever comes in goes out and that's it right uh, but it's good to have that thought process right it's good to think on those lines and say okay what is it that i can set aside for the future uh maybe to take care of certain expenses like maybe others health maybe others hospital you know whatever it is you know maybe i want to buy something later in life uh maybe it, it requires a lot of money maybe it's a, like a vehicle or, or land or whatever so set aside something right okay um okay working out our discretionary spending amount you know those are non essentials and and even holidays and things like that so that also can be worked out okay the main thing is um you know we we need to understand that we or if we can discipline ourselves and say i'm going to live within this means okay will live within my means okay what does that mean that means that i'm not going to go above what i am uh what my income is i'm not going to live or spend more than what my income is in this season of life okay so one thing we need to understand is when it comes to uh when it comes to money when it comes to income you know it's not going to remain the same right we, sometimes we we think okay this is how it is going to be this is how small it is going to be this is how my income is going to be uh but then what is there in this season of life need not always be in the next season of our lives you know it 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 might be more it could also be less right so for us to be content or to live within our means is very important okay so how can we you know so the question is how can we live beyond our means right how can we go beyond i'm i'm getting only x amount of money or i'm let's say i'm getting 1000 how can i spend more how can i spend 1001 or how can i spend 2000 okay the, the answer is simple it's because we have facilities to borrow right we have credit cards we have you know so many options so many easy options which actually get us into a trap Right, to get us into a debt trap. So we need to be careful. I know. I know. We looked at this you know, in our previous uh, first year subject, like financial man uh, stewardship, right? Uh, but this is something that we need to uh, discipline ourselves to live within our means. Okay, this is a very important uh, aspect. Okay, not being tempted to borrow, not being tempted to take a loan. Now, is taking a loan uh, sin? or what do you think 
but it can it can severely you know hamper our lifestyle right that's for sure right because when you take a loan you need to repay and when you repay it, it you need to repay with interest right and that pressure to repay is always there so while it's not a sin or it's not a evil thing to take a loan but you need to be mindful you need to do it carefully so that you're in a position to in a comfortable position to repay that's the thing now i also know that there are times when there's an emergency you know there are emergencies there are difficult uh, situations when loans are taken um but we need to put in every effort to clear that and come out of it you know difficult situations in the sense maybe someone in the family is unwell sick emergency and then you know it requires some amount of money uh, to take care of that and that is when most most of the time you know that is when uh, we get into a debt right it's not that you were you were you know you spent it on wasteful spending no it was actually a need but it was a big need it was a immediate need and you didn't have any other option right because we you know we didn't consider other options right like life insurance or you know other things like that right from the start we didn't think of that or medical insurance um so or maybe we didn't have the means to get those kind of you know those kind of tools um so because of that we get into a debt you have a question francis yeah so regarding the borrowing the money pastor so like uh, my question is like this i i have a need i borrow the some big amount from one friend he also like in a like very critical situation but unfortunately so he, he is also in a situation like not a rich man okay. kind of that but unfortunately i passed away mm. there is nothing to give nobody is to give to him to get back mm. so is it a sin or like in that way is it a hurting to him right mm. so is it a sin how so he, be... yeah he trusted and gave it was just a personal maybe some amount that he gave and then um, yeah so so the thing is uh, uh from the per- from the perspective of the one who gave the loan so let, let's say you know you could be a person giving out to someone uh it's always you know if it's a big amount it's always uh, good to see uh, or you know those kind of cover those kind of aspects you know if uh, that is why they ask for a surety like these banks and everything they ask for a surety okay if not you then who is who is giving a guarantee right so that is why they have that okay if this person is not there who will actually back up and give uh, cover that thing yeah but um, these things happen but um, so you know so that can be a conversation that can be a discussion where you see okay if not you you know will someone else pay that can be an agreement and so that as a, that person also as a witness can be done but if that is not there and no one else has an idea you know then i think you have to let go of that amount okay. we can go and ask the family but there's no proof there's no evidence so the family also will think okay you know this person just because this person has died all these people are coming and saying these things so um yeah so that's uh, so that's why uh, um like we can see certain times when uh, you don't expect you know you know you don't expect it and that's why people sometimes also give saying okay you pay when you're able to you know which means that there are chances that it won't come so they give with that freedom saying okay you pay when you're able to um, even if it's not you know what's what is unsaid is even if it's not it's okay i know your need and i you know that's fine uh, but the terms you can always there's nothing wrong in being very specific and and also to have that agreement you know so where you're agreeing saying that okay this by this date i agree to give pay back by this date i agree to this thing and if not you know this is my witness and and so on it's 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 nothing wrong people sometimes think that um, or feel uneasy to talk about you know the specifics of these terms but it's nothing wrong if that is what is agreed then you go by you know what what is agreed upon yeah 
uh, make a record of that. Yeah. Um, so they make a record of the in the book saying that I have to, I owe someone money. Mm. Mm. Yeah, people making note of it. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, there's another question here. Pastor, what about medical insurance? There are times when people have, are asked to pay a huge amount as insurance, but then um, by God's grace, they aren't hospitalized. Is it wise to always hold health insurance, especially for the elderly? Uh, see, there are varying opinions on uh, medical insurance, right? Uh, there are I know of some people who've, I mean, at least one person who for a long time did not want anything to do with medical insurance. Health insurance. I just say, you know, if God wants to, you know, if I need to go, I'll go. Right? But the thing is, if I need to go, I mean, that's a, okay. But what about, so you might be in a situation where you can't help it, but the others are there, your family is there, and uh, it falls on them. The responsibility to take care of the treatment, and they're not they're not going to be of the same opinion. They might, you know, the daughter or the son might not say, okay, dad is like this, so we'll just let him go. No, because they love, they care, and they want the best. So um, so the thing is, um, so that's, you know, that's some line of thought. I won't take uh, health insurance, medical insurance, whatever, you know. Something. Yes, you know, we do have faith in God. We do, uh, you know, and we have a responsibility to take care, you know, eat well and, you know, exercise and all that, take care of our health. But, it is not sin to have something like this. It is like saving for the future, you know. Um, yes, insurance. Uh, there are various uh, kinds of premiums that you you can pay. You don't have to. You don't not al always have to insure for a huge amount. You don't have to. You know, whatever you can um, uh, manage at that point. You know, given your income, given your condition, you know, you can always cover that. Um, yeah, so we can always make a wise decision right, about the health insurance, uh, medical insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And also, it's uh, like they say, you know, when when is the when is the right time to save? Right, save money. When people ask that question, when is the right time to save? And the answer is yesterday. It's always today is not the thing. You have to start as early as possible to have that thing of. And I know, you know, traditionally we have this stereotype oh, you know, this is a Kanjus person, he's always saving, not spending. But it's saving is it is not a negative trait. No, it's just you're being wise. You know, all through Proverbs, you will see that. Right? Um, uh, people are, you know, when, when when the writer of Proverbs says, go to the ant, you sluggard, and learn from her ways. What is the ant doing? It's actually storing up. Of course, it is, you know, uh, eating uh, whatever daily, but then it's storing up for a future. Right? So, so the scripture says, you go and learn. So there's nothing wrong in storing up for future. You know. When it when does it become wrong? It becomes when you know I'm I become extremely selfish. You know, I I become uh, you know uh, I, I'm not open to the needs of others. I'm not generous. I become very selfish. Right? But it is not wrong to save for future. Right. And several places, the Bible, Bible talks about, you know, know the state of your flocks. Again, in Proverbs, you know, know the state of your, which means that a, in an agricultural kind of a situation uh, of, you know, sheep rearing, saying, know the state of your flocks. This is your wealth. Uh, this is what you, you know, you, this is your business. So know the condition, you know, is it there? Is it not there? Is it lost? You know, how many, how many do we have? So, yeah, so that's the thing. So the negative side of it is, of course, selfishness and greed and covetousness and all that. But you put that aside and say, okay, can I actually do this? Right. So um, the reason we are looking at it is that it is something that we need to learn. It doesn't come automatically. Right. Some of these things we we learn by watching. Maybe our parents, our grandparents, right? They had this. Sometimes, sometimes maybe. 
they did not have that habit of spend you know saving at all you know they just whatever they got they spent and sometimes we we kind of get that habit we caught it from the previous generation right and so we really need to unlearn and relearn some of these skills right we need to unlearn these things some things that we have we thought you know we looked at scripture and we thought you know sometimes um without a scriptural backing we think this is unspiritual right to think like this is unholy to think like this is worldly right so when we the reason we have financial stewardship and things like that is because we see that the bible talks about money and talks about what we need to the right way to use it the right way to you know even save and spend and so on so um we need to have that uh, ability build that ability in us right okay any questions further questions okay 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 so um we we're, we're going to look at another resource a very important resource which is uh, the human resource right and we are studying that because we we realize that ministry is about people right ministry is about people we cannot be ministers of god in isolation right either we are reaching out to people or you know we are with people we are uh, we are doing things as a team right in fact um, yes god will raise up a person to carry out his plans and purposes and so on but we see in scripture over and over again like he sent them out two by two he sent them out you know as a team right so um, and we see in scripture how you know in the book of acts we see people moving out uh, maybe they went you know uh, alone but then there were others who joined them and a classic example is paul his ministry you know he yes uh, as soon as he had this encounter with god he started you know he started preaching but then we, over a period of time we just see that how things unfold right he ministered as a team timothy titus and so many others um he went to different places and built people up and people joined him on his journey and so on so either he ministered with people or he ministered to people so you see that people are in god's eyes people are precious in other words people are a resource right so that also we need to have that relational skill of managing this very precious resource right um so we we'll, what we'll do is we'll we we'll look at it uh, next class because um, i just i just want to share some opening thoughts one is that uh, that it is not just us alone doing ministry there will be other people connected to us right so sometimes some people are great at doing things on their own but you add one more person and like for a for a particular task and you say okay both of you do it then there's always friction right there's always a conflict and so we need to understand that god will bring people to work with us to work for a common vision so we need to know, understand the dynamics of people working together people um you know um or leading people working with people and so on so we're going to look at that uh in this particular topic right okay we okay, will stop here and then we'll continue next class right okay right thank you god bless bye bye